Good morning, and welcome to all of you joining us for a time of praise and worship of our great God. We are the Charlotte Church, and we are grateful to have you with us. I'd also like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Mom, I'm so grateful that God gave me you as my mother. I love you. And as I said, today we are here to focus on praising and worshiping our great God and giving thanks to him for sending his son Jesus to show us the way to a right relationship with the Father. But take note that during Jesus's ministry, he demolished the barriers that existed for women during that time. And he raised the standard for how women should be treated with love, respect, and fully equal with men. Remember Paul's words to the Galatians in chapter three, verse 28. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you are a woman and or a mother listening today, know this, God sees you. He knows your fears, your dreams, your hopes, your needs. We live in a world that does not submit to the ways of God. And so many of you may feel the exact opposite, but I encourage you today, listen to the message and make one decision for your relationship with God. Decide to enrich someone this week, letting them know that God sees them. And so again, thank you for joining us today in worship and praise. Welcome. Oh, to 
up the mountain Isaac asked of Abraham Here I see the wood and fire Before the offering, where's the lamb? Abraham thought for a moment Then he gave his son the answer Still it's true for you and me God himself is here to help us There's an offering in store All we need will be provided on the mountain of the Lord, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. On the mountain of the Lord, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. On the mountain of the Lord, whoa. blood was poured All we need has been provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided on the mountain of the Lord Whoa. Whoa. You say ask in your name And we will receive On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord on the mountain of the Lord Whoa. Whoa. Good morning everyone, I am Wendy Weir and this is my son Jackson Weir Happy Mother's Day Today's church announcements are as follows. Calling all men of all ages. Yes, dads, you can bring your sons to the first ever MMOG style bonfire talk in the church building parking lot on Friday, May 14th at 7 p.m. 
plans are to gather as many men and boys as possible together for fellowship, song, confession, prayer, bring your friends, and a chair. Also, this Thursday, May 13th, the Youth and Family Ministry will have a parent midweek for those who have middle schoolers and high schoolers at 715. Come hear the plans for this year and the heart behind Family Devo Days. The Zoom information can be found in your inbox or on the church calendar on the website. And now I will be reading the prayer request for this week. So the first prayer request is for Lily Tran. Lily has finished her inpatient radiation treatment at Duke Medical in Durham and has been moved to Royal Park of Matthews. See the email announcement for her address to send her a card, Royal Park of Matthews. Nation of India, please bring a prayer for our brothers and sisters in India who are currently battling COVID-19. The situation in India is dire and they need our prayers and petitions to God on their behalf. Now, our brother Joe Seif will lead us in prayer. Thank you, Wendy and Jackson. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for allowing us this forum and this format to be able to connect with the service. And I pray, Father, that you'll bless the lesson and just every part of the service today uh, as the worship, just will just uh, glorify and praise you in our hearts. Uh, where we come to you with humility, we know we need you so much in our life. Thank you for the way you're changing and working in our life. Help us to be re really receptive to that and just surrender to you. Lord, we also want to ask that you be with our loved ones uh, in this area as they deal with COVID-19, but particularly we also want to put our hearts out to our brothers and sisters in India. Uh, we know that there's much suffering right now, and we know there's a lot of stuff going on. And I pray, Father, that you'll encourage them with your love. I pray that through these uh, events that people's hearts can be reached and impacted for you, as well as, Father, uh, that our brothers and sisters needs will be met there uh, that um, we will just uh, as a nation reach out and make needs but also as the church uh, I also want to pray for Lily Tran thank you for her faith in you thank you for just working so far far in her life I pray father that uh, you will uh, as she comes back to Charlotte she's here that uh, you'll bless the people at Royal Park where she's at now those who are attending to her as well as her doctors and just be with her family and those who are close to her and strengthen her in a powerful way well we we know that you work through all things and I pray Father that you work a miracle there uh, thank you for uh, just just loving us in so many ways you're a powerful incredible God and it's your son's name we pray and ask these things amen Good morning, church. The last 15 months have been unbelievable, but the good news is that we're finally able to start making real plans for the congregation to meet in person on Sunday mornings and on a consistent basis. As you might expect, we will not be back to normal for a while, but we will be together. Now here are some of the details. For the Sunday service of June 6th, and June 13th, there'll be a sign-up sheet for 150 people to sign up for each Sunday. There'll be no Kids Kingdom classes, and there'll be no age restriction. We'll be following CDC guidelines. Masks need to be worn throughout the service, but the people on the stage can remove the masks due to their distance from the auditorium, and they will maintain six feet social distance. We will sit as a family, but we'll have family six feet apart from each other. Uh, unfortunately, all fellowship will need to be outside. Now, we ask that you stay at home if you have COVID symptoms or have been around somebody who's tested positive in the last two weeks. That'll be prior to the June 6th um, sign up. Now, we'll only be using the uh, sanctuary level bathrooms. And unfortunately, at this point, we're asking that you please refrain from handshakes or hugs. The church will be clean between services. 
That contribution will not be collected, so please give online or mail to the church office. Now, for subsequent Sundays, we're going to be adjusting to ensure that everybody is safe. Thank you for your patience as we work through this very difficult time. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 56. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
to the king I don't have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces it's my offering take me to the king truth is I'm tired options of you I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurting of you. I can't fake what's left to do. Truth is, I'm weak. No strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die. Mm -hmm. One touch will change my life. Take me to the king, I don't have much to bring, my heart is torn in pieces, it's my offering, lay me at the throne, leave me there alone, to gaze upon your glory, and sing to you song please take me to the king truth is it's time to stop playing these games we need no word for the people's pain so long
Good morning, Charlotte Church, and welcome to all of you who are visiting with us this beautiful morning, and happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers that are there and all of you that are joining us today. Mom, if you're listening, I love you. And we hope that all of you have an incredible day and are honored uh, in a way that you deserve. Again, thank you to all of you who are visiting with us. And today's message is entitled, God Sees You. I want to start off by reading a passage out of John chapter 1. God's Word tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. And that just gives the description of what it was like as Jesus came on the scene. Talks about his cousin John and how John the Baptist was a witness to Jesus Christ. He was a witness to the Messiah, preparing the way for him. And the Bible tells us that. He was not recognized by the world, although he created the world. He made the world. So the question is, what happened to the sight of his people, to the sight of his people that they could not recognize him? We're also told in John that he was not received by his creation. That's like not being welcomed at the family reunion and you organized it. But for all that receive him and believe in his name, we're told that he gives them the right to be children, to be called children of God, born of God, not of man. It's a different type of birth. And God wants to see those types of births all over the world, that men and women are born again of God. Today, we live in a world that does not recognize Jesus, his righteousness, his ways, his words. We live in a world that does not receive Jesus, his teachings and direction, his expectations, his life. And because of that truth, there are tragic injustices that happen all over the world today. There's human trafficking, including children. There's cultural genocide, all types of horrible atrocities. We as humans are people who have enslaved our fellow man. We've abused power. We've operated out of greed, which has increased the number of men, women, children, and families that live in poverty. We've depleted resources that were meant to be shared by all. And we have judged and discriminated against each other based on tribe, 
culture, country, color, age, weight, height, economics, how much money you make, how much money you don't make, what side of the tracks you live on, and yes, gender. And it's already been said earlier today that in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, Paul reminding the church there, that because, all, because of all the work that Jesus did, that there is neither Jew, Greek, slave, free. There's not male nor female. Now, obviously, God is not talking about you can no longer tell if someone is a male or female. But what he's saying is that we're all one in Christ. We're all one. All of us are one. There is equality there. That's part of the good news. That is the desire of God. And only through Jesus can it be seen in its fullness. And this is part of what we endeavor to be and to live like. And for all of those that follow the way of the Lord, we are or we have those answers and we can truly work together again because we are all one in Christ. Recently, I viewed a series uh, that was set at the turn of the 20th century um, and the location was New York City. And in this series, uh, part of what you saw was um, the views of women at that time. So you're talking the early 1900s. And as I'm watching this series and watching, and the focal point was not the treatment of women, but you saw it throughout the series. As I watched it, my heart was grieved. And I thought of what still exists even today with the treatment of women. And as a man, I was disgusted and appalled, but I had to look over the span of my life and see how I have played a part in perpetuating the lies and myths of women. And in doing that, recently also I had a road trip with my oldest daughter and I shared with her just what I see in her and the value, her worth, her intelligence, her abilities, that she was able to achieve that, yes, ultimately by the grace of God, but she didn't need a man or any other person to help her uh, raise up to that point. Now, yes, her mother and I, Jennifer and I, gave her tons of support and encouragement. So we've been in her corner and remain in her corner along with our youngest daughter, who also has great value and worth and intelligence and abilities. But I wanted her to know, I see that in you. And to all of you women that are listening, that don't feel that or don't experience that value, that encouragement, that truth. God sees you. And I'm committed to doing my part and helping the brothers in the Charlotte Church also to express, to acknowledge, and to live like Jesus in this way. That your honor as women are, is rather, upheld. And I believe that the heart of God is grieved also as he sees how his creation is treating one another. When he told us through Jesus what part of the greatest commandment was to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus made it abundantly clear that everyone is our neighbor. He said, treat your neighbor as yourself with respect, with kindness, with encouragement, all those things. Imagine living 
in a world, living in a community where you're treated as someone would treat themselves in that honor, holding each other up. Well, this is what Jesus calls us to do. As I continue, I want everyone to listen to what I will share here momentarily. But for all the mothers and all the women, I want you to pay close attention that God sees you. God remembers you. And God is fighting for you. Turn to Psalm 66 with me. In Psalm 66. Starting to read here in verse 16. The writer says, Come and listen, all of you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. The writer says there, he says, his praise was on my tongue. What can you or should you be praising God for right now without ceasing? And the writer, this whole psalm is about praise for answered prayer. Understand, answered prayer does not necessarily mean a yes. God always answers prayer. It's either yes or no or later. Now, that's the rub right there. You don't know what later means. Many times later feels like no, right? But he always answers prayer. But this is the writer here is praising him. He says his praise was on my tongue. Then the writer says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, God would not have listened. And so ask yourself, are you holding any unrighteousness in your heart that blocks the ears of God? As many times when we're in anguish or we're calling out for things or we're praying to God and depending on the state we're in, we may be holding sin in our heart. It may be the sin of bitterness. It may be hatred. It may be jealousy or envy. Any number of things. And so when the writer says cherish them. He's talking about if I would have held it in my heart, if I would have held on to it and not dealt with it, he says, God would not have listened. So, but because God did listen, the writer let those things go. He repented, got them out of his heart so that they would not take hold of him. But here's the point I want to make, that through those things, God hears you. Your prayers are not silent to him. But I would encourage you, especially in light of the world that we're living in, to not cherish sin in your heart so that your prayers will not be hindered. Now turn over with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I want to read just a little bit about Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now, Hannah was married to a man named Elkanah, who had two wives. One of them, her name was Penina, I believe it was. Yes, Penina. And then there was Hannah. Penina, uh, God blessed her womb and she had many children. Hannah, for whatever reason, it says that God closed her womb and she had no children. And so she was in anguish. She was in shame. And she wanted children badly. 
And it says that Elkanah loved her because she did not have children. And so Elkanah understood the shame that she felt and was dealing with and the hurt that she was dealing with. And so he would give her an extra portion uh, of, of resources and things that, that came from uh, their lot. And so as tradition would have it, they went up to Shiloh to worship. And in the sanctuary is where we will pick up this story where, where Hannah is praying to the Lord. And I want you to look at her heart and we'll pick up here in verse nine. It says, once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now, Eli, the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. Eli was the priest there in Shiloh. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart. And her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long would you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace and may the Lord of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went on her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. And so we see this story of Hannah again in anguish. But I think it was, it's so powerful when she tells Eli, I'm not drunk. And so that probably was something that was kind of common, that people would go to uh, the sanctuary, or go to the temple drunk. So Eli sees this, but she says, I was pouring out my soul. And I know there's so many that are listening today that pour out their soul to the Lord, waiting for an answer. And I want to encourage you to not give up. Hannah again was praying out of her great anguish and grief, but here's what she did. As she was praying to the Lord, she was dedicating the gift that she prayed and hoped that God would give her, giving him back to the Lord for his service. She's like, you give me a son, I'm going to give him back to you all the days of his life. And I will not let a razor touch his head. Kind of like Samson. The razor wasn't supposed to touch his head. So she was giving back to the Lord. She wanted God to be in control of this blessing. So she wanted the blessing of having a child, having a son. But she said, but I'm going to give him to you for the rest of his days for your service. God remembered Hannah. Now, this request of remembering was more than just Hannah asking God to recall that she actually exists. She was asking God to act in her behalf or on her behalf. I want you to act on it. And so God did. And so they arose that next morning. They go home. They worship. They go home. 
Elkanah and Hannah had relations. God remembered her. He acted. She gave birth to Samuel over the course of time. He remembered her need. He remembered her heart and that she wanted God to be in control of the blessing. So what are some things that you can give to God? And see, many times when we ask God, we have to ask ourselves, where is, where is my heart in this request? Where's my mind in this request? And I know there's so many right now, women, all of us, many people have been crying out to God in anguish. Do not give up. God hears you and God remembers you. But let's make sure that we are in alignment with God so that when he decides to bless us, that we're ready for it, that we understand it, and that we allow God to be in control of it. Lastly, I want to share with you um, out of Genesis chapter 16 and want to read about Hagar. And a few months back, as uh, we shared with you before, that many of the staff and some of you had an opportunity to participate in a conference entitled Let Justice Roll. And so in one of the classes, it was about Hagar. And it actually gave some insights to her life that I had not really thought about before. Now let's pick up in Genesis chapter 16, and we're going to read about Hagar, who is the maidservant of Sarai. And we're going to pick up here in chapter 16, Genesis 16. We're going to pick up in verse 7. The general story is that God promised on oath Abraham or Abram that he would be the father of nations and that his descendants would be as numerous as the sand on the seashore. And it took many, many years before that promise was fulfilled. And in that course, Sarai, Abram's wife, came to him and said, why don't you sleep with my maidservant so that you can have a son? This is how God wants it to happen. So he lays with her. She becomes pregnant. So when she becomes pregnant, uh, Sarai feels like now she's looking upon her with contempt. And so now she's angry and she goes to Abram and she says, she's looking at me contemptuously and Abram said, she's your maidservant, do with her as you will. So, so then Sarai goes and mistreats her, and then Hagar runs away. And we'll pick up the story there. In verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now with child and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him, and he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. Now that's, that's it's challenging, but listen to what she says. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Now, the New American Standard uh, Bible is perhaps more accurate in that last sentence. And actually, what she says is, you are the God who sees me. But then she goes and says, have I even remained alive here after seeing him? Because she's acknowledging God's majesty his power, and his sovereignty. Hagar was in the presence of God. 
God sees you. She was like, God sees me. And think about this. This this is a story, really, of an abuse of power. Because Hagar was asked to do something that was really against her will, to lay with Abram. Um, She was mistreated and again forced to do something against her will. And she ended up being despised, hated. Hagar was unseen up to this point. And for those of you, those of you women out there that have been subjected to similar things, God shows up here. The angel seeks her out. And he calls her by name. God knows your name. Jesus, it says, is in heaven interceding for you right now. So he calls her out by name. And then she would, Hagar was lifted up and given a new future, prominence even. And her praise to God was, I've now seen the God who sees me. God sees you. You are not hidden from God. And so in saying all of that, what I'm encouraging from you and asking of you is that you give him his proper praise. Trust him. And in the church, we've got an incredible job to do here with with Jesus and for Jesus. And what I mean is this, as the world is going headlong into sin and not knowing how to treat to speak to one another, how to uplift one another sustainably. We've got to do it in the Lord, especially if we claim to have the spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling in us. Dwelling in us. We have the ability to do so much more. And here's a commitment that I want to make as a brother in Christ. And I will call all the brothers uh, to the heart of Jesus in all areas, but especially now as I'm speaking to the women, to uphold you as a pure, beautiful woman of God. That we will speak, think, and honor you as you should. Think about how Jesus just demolished the societal norms when he allowed women to actually follow him in his ministry and be with him and be friends with them, depending on them. How he raised them up. That's why women wanted to follow Jesus and be around him, because he loved them in a way that they never had been loved. And brothers, this is what we're called to, or part of what we're called to, in our life as Jesus followers, in our life as kingdom men, as the world mistreats women, holds them down, not holding them up and respecting and honoring their worth. This is what we're called to. So today being Mother's Day, it's it's a day the world has chosen, but mothers as well as fathers, should be honored every day. But the Lord that we follow is in, we should be praising and uplifting his name. That praise should be on our lips, on our tongue, that we're praising God, we're upholding his name, we're living for Jesus. And in doing that, The Bible tells us in Psalm 37 that as we live for him, as we trust in him, as we give our lives over to him, that he will make the justice of our cause shine like the noonday sun. And so today, again, happy Mother's Day. You are honored. You are loved. If anything has encouraged you or helped you this morning. 
I pray and hope uh, that you continue to join us. And very soon here, we will, we're working right now on plans to be able to meet face to face. And we look forward uh, to those times as we honor one another. And we're working on plans also uh, for those who, for different reasons, will not be able to join us face to face. Uh, as we are reaching out to many, many people to bring the joy, the love, and the word and truth of Christ. So to God be the glory. Amen. So here is my commitment to you, sisters, that as a brother in Christ, that I will work along with all the brothers, all the men in the church to uphold your honor as Jesus does to acknowledge, uh, to engage and partner together uh, with your talents, your worth, who you are. And we're even studying you know, deeper in terms of what the Bible actually teaches in terms of women's roles. And there's all types of things that have been said throughout the generations. But you are not just valuable, but honored before God. Think of what it must have been like as Jesus obliterated societal norms and allowed women to be along with him in his ministry, uh, preaching the good news, serving uh, with him, uh, helping him in his ministry to the point where Jesus depended on them because he saw them for who they really are. It's like, they are his creation. He's, he loved them. And as our world is arguing and going crazy and bickering in the church, we have an incredible calling that what the world can't do, we can do through Jesus. When the world can't be unified, where men and women are battling and bickering with one another in the church, we can overcome. And I call all of us to allow the spirit that dwells in us to be a blinding light to that truth. Sisters, women, we will see you. I pray that the things that were shared today, at least one thing was encouraging and moving to you that you can build on it. Right now we're making plans and being able to meet face to face in, in our building. And we're also talking and making plans to serve those who for various reasons will not be able to join us face to face because we want God's message to be heard by all. And so pray for us as we do that. And so again, sisters, we as brothers, as your brothers, as your friends, we will see you. Happy Mother's Day. And to God be the glory.